Hello and welcome to Inventing Civilization, the YouTube channel where we take a closer look at the history of political thought and philosophy. In this episode, St. Augustine and Thomas Aquinas on the purpose of the state in medieval Europe. First, I should make it plain that these two men were not contemporaries. Augustine was born in 354 in the Roman imperial province of Numidia, in what we now call Algeria. The Roman Empire at this point was beginning to fall apart, and Augustine lived in turbulent times. Although ancient Greek and Roman literature were still prominent, and Augustine was influenced by the works of Plato, the push to consolidate Christianity as the empire's official religion meant biblical scripture was the main source of philosophy. Augustine lived in an age when classical civilization was slowly but surely being eclipsed by medieval Christian civilization. By the time Thomas Aquinas was born, nearly 900 years later, in 1225 in the Kingdom of Naples, Europe had long since lost touch with its classical roots, and it had been governed by the heavy hand of the Church for nearly a millennium. But it was around this time that the works of Aristotle made their way from the Islamic world back to Europe, where they were translated from Arabic into Latin. The recovery of Aristotle, as well as the teachings of Islamic philosophers such as Al-Farabi, who reconciled ancient Greek thought with their own Abrahamic religion, would come to have a big influence on Thomas Aquinas. In a nutshell, Augustinian thought was Neoplatonist, and it saw the state as a necessary and divinely appointed institution meant to curb the sins of mankind. Thomism, on the other hand, was Aristotelian, and argued the state was the result of human nature and conducive to human flourishing. Now, both men thought human nature had been corrupted by the original sin of Adam and Eve, to the point where human free will was tempted by evil, a somewhat pessimistic view of humanity. But from there, the two men took very different turns. St. Augustine subscribed to predestination, the idea that every human being is predestined for either salvation or damnation. On that premise, he divided humanity into two groups, the people who love God, whom he collectively referred to as the city of God, and those who don't, whom he referred to as the earthly city. Where the former were driven by love, caritas, the latter were driven by lust, libido. To Augustine, lust is a generic term that encompasses all earthly desires. The most important of these were cupiditas, or the insatiable appetite for material possessions, and libido dominandi, or the desire for power over other men. Augustine also thought that the good people in this world were in the minority. The many unregenerate souls and their desire for wealth and power would always push the world towards violence and chaos. In that setting, it was the purpose of the state to maintain peace and order by catering to a universal fear, the fear of punishment. It was the only way to restrain the unregenerate souls and to allow everyone else to prosper. To Augustine, this called for a monarchy, and it was the king's job to maintain some form of benign stability. If the king happened to be a good Christian, this was all the better. But even if he wasn't, citizens should still subject themselves to his rule, even if the king was a heathen tyrant. Not only was the stability offered by a state apparatus preferential over anarchy, but states were also part of God's divine plan for mankind, according to Augustine. To St. Augustine, the state is divinely ordained punishment for humanity, but it's also a divine gift. The state is a form of punishment because it has the power to punish and even to execute, but it's a divine gift in that its heavy hand can at least install order and the limited earthly semblance of divine peace and justice. This was a very minimalist and negative conception of the state. Conversely, Thomas Aquinas had a much more positive view of this world. To St. Thomas, there is no question that the afterlife is vastly superior, but that doesn't mean we can strive for greatness here on Earth, and perhaps even approximate it. Thomas also didn't subscribe to Augustine's idea that politics were foreign to mankind. Instead, he followed Aristotle's idea that man is by nature a political animal. In addition, Thomas didn't share Augustine's firm belief in predestination, which means, of course, that to Thomas, 
it mattered a great deal more what we might be able to achieve in our earthly existence. Thomas based his reasoning on what he called natural law, lex naturalis, the idea that God has given us all our own inner moral compass that allows us to tell right from wrong. To Thomas, our social and political nature, coupled with natural law, allow us to build a virtuous society, and the effort of doing so would in turn make us more virtuous people. This means the purpose of the state is not simply to suppress sin through punishment, but to stimulate earthly well-being. Thomas posited that the best form of government to achieve this was a monarchy with a Christian king. That mirrored how God ruled the universe, but of course, no man would ever be as infallible as God, so Thomas proposed what is essentially a mixed constitution. The citizens would elect the king from among themselves, and the king would not govern alone, but he would be supported by advisors. Citizens should also be involved in the daily workings of the state, and finally, should the king lose his way and become a tyrant, then according to Thomas, the people have the right to dispose of him. To St. Thomas, then, the state is a natural expression of humanity's social and political tendencies. If it is based on divinely ordained natural law, it can promote natural virtues, the most important of which is justice. This is a much more elaborate and positive conception of the state. So, what we have here are two conflicting theories. They differ in many ways, but what lies at the heart of the divide is reason, or the lack thereof. Both St. Augustine and St. Thomas thought the hearts of men were conflicted by good and evil. To St. Thomas, we can use the power of reason to build a just and virtuous state and society. But to St. Augustine, that would have seemed a laughable idea. He believed we are slaves to our lesser urges, and even when we do the right thing, we often do it for the wrong reasons. Modern political philosophy tends to follow St. Thomas, in a very optimistic view of humans and their political associations. But if we look around at our troubled world today, where in recent decades state after state has descended into anarchy, there may be a case for reconsidering some of St. Augustine's warnings as well. Well, that concludes this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to learn more or cite this video, please check the description box below for more information. For now, though, I want to thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.